talk to the di uh, Director of External Relations, uh, Kenya Red Cross, Wariko Waita is joining us on the line. Uh, good morning. Good morning. Uh, kindly talk to us about what, as the Kenya Red Cross, you've been able to gather in as far as this uh, attack is concerned. Well, at the moment, we have a confirmation of 48 um, fatalities, and we have three casualties who have been evacuated, both uh, two to Lamu um, Hospital and one to Pekatoni. We have uh, psychosocial needs on the ground, and we have our team deployed there, as well as tracing team to ensure that those who are still um, looking for loved ones get the support they need. All right, and from those, um, I understand about three of them that are injured, and those your teams have been able to interact with this morning or following the attacks. What have you been able to gather from them uh, in, in how the attack unfolded last night? Uh, one Hello? that um, yes started can you hear me yes 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 um, for now they're they're still recovering and we are just basically helping them as much as possible towards recovery um, the, the assessments are being done by the government officials on the ground mm -hmm. and that's the information we have at the moment and what are you in need of as a Kenya Red Cross are you good in terms of the what you need in the situation that you're dealing with now Yes, um, at this point we are not, we are assessing the need for blood. At this point we do not, we are not having a blood drive. We are looking at, uh, I think the biggest need right now is social support of those who, who witnessed some of the attacks um, being undertaken. So right now it's our teams on the ground. We ask for people to be patient. We ask for people to wait for the right information to be communicated um, and to give support where possible to the families that have lost uh, loved ones. All right, uh, we had been informed that there would be a crisis center set up. Uh, do we have that in place now? for um, various things that we are sending to the ground um, in terms of supporting um, the, the, um, the, the communities on the ground in terms of blankets, um, uh, preservation, formalin, um, IV sets, um, and so forth, which have been requested. So this is what we are forwarding to the ground to ensure at least uh, the right um, instruments are available to the to the experts who are now handling the case. And how far, uh, in terms of the area of coverage or uh, area affected by these killings, are you uh, looking at? Uh, we understood earlier that it was going as far as 10 kilometers from Peketoni town. Is that what you'd say as well as the Kenya Red Cross? Well, there is a lot of infrastructure that has been destructed. The assessment is still being done. Uh, quite a number of houses and we'll have the number of houses affected. We have some hotels, um, restaurants and public places and other um, public infrastructure that was burnt. So the full assessment should, is underway and we will have a full report shortly, but we do know there were a number of people who lost their homes who are in the number of businesses that have been now uh, burnt down. But are, are, your, are your officials only in Peketoni town or do you know of other areas around that particular town that have also been affected? Well, at this point we're confirming that, but for now that's what we know. Okay. All right. Thank you, uh, Wariko Waita, for talking to us uh, this morning. Director External uh, Relations, Kenya Red Cross, uh, just bringing us an update. Again, just confirming that number, the death toll standing at 48, and that uh, three of those who uh, sustained injuries are currently undergoing treatment. We now want to talk to our Ferdinand Domondi, who has this morning uh, just bringing us up to speed uh, with what's happening there. He was at the mortuary. He did uh, uh, see the bodies and telling us that they were all men. Fadi, um, you've been there for a while now. What, can, what new information can you give us? Ferdinand? Ferdinand? Yes, Sophia, I can hear you. All right, there you are. Um, so what, do you have any new information that you can give us? You've been following this. You've talked to the uh, Kenya Red Cross officials who are um, you know, talking about the same number you gave us earlier, 48 killed, uh, and also that, uh, that uh, they're organizing for that um, crisis center to be set up. But what else can you tell us, Ferdi? 
I can tell you that all, all sorts of conspiracy theories are beginning to come up as to why this area could possibly have been attacked. Mm -hmm. And uh, some of the narratives are uh, a little too sensitive to even put on air. What I can tell you is that uh, there seems to be have been actually what looks like, apart from targeting specific persons for whatever reason, uh, this uh, narrative of uh, economic sabotage also is, looks to be... Uh, bearing ground. I'm standing right in front of the Equity Bank here, it's a very big establishment. It was raised to the ground. Uh, I can see they also tried to burn down the Kenya Commercial Bank, but that was partially banned. Across the town, I have seen the Kenya Women's Finance Trust, which was also banned. Right next to it is an agrovet, which is still burning up to now, and looks like the flames are getting wider and smoke billowing more. Uh, I was told that it was a store that had all sort of plastics and equipment and all this aggregate material in there, so they are still burning, there's still fire there. And next to it was a fuel station which was also torched. Now I'm speaking to the people and they're saying this could go three ways. One is a suggestion of terrorism, and we are getting locals saying that when the attackers were moving from house to house, they were uh, compelling the persons there to make some religious chants. And if you fail to respond appropriately, you are shot in the head. What perhaps may query that is, if it is terrorism, what we have done previously is that uh, they were very indiscriminate in their killings. But this time around, the women were being spared. So, and children as well were being spared. So why is it that young men and uh, middle-aged men were the ones being attacked if this was a terror attack. The other is the angle of economic sabotage in that the fact that a lot of the establishments here, uh, the proprietorship seems to be heading towards a certain community. And I can only say as much as there because that is a little sensitive unless that is actually established. The third narrative, Sophia, that is coming out is politics. Uh, most of the people here in Peketoni area are, uh, are settlers. They came to various parts of the country, specifically one area. And uh, the locals suggesting that there has not been a lot of, you know, uh, a bit of politics for throughout the presence here. So some are saying, could this have been politically motivated? So as you can see, there's a lot of conspiracy theories coming out, a lot of suggestions and people trying to understand why this very silent town, very secluded, and largely peaceful, and very unconfrontational as far as I can tell, even during the political upheavals in these areas, this area was largely very peaceful. So why now and who is this? And these are the questions that need to be answered and the only way to answer that is to find the perpetrators and to be able to understand exactly what is going on because this, this is not answered. This is how some conspiracy theories begin to fester and the locals may believe whatever angle they decide to believe whether it's politics, business or terrorism and then there might be a reaction of any other kind. The only way to store this, Sophia, I believe, is to find the answers. But like I mentioned earlier, History has taught us in the coast region that these attacks have never had solid answers and nobody has been held accountable. So who are these people and why are they seemingly untouchable or why is it that they cannot be found? Uh, Those are not the questions being asked, Sophia. Right. It's clearly the conspiracy theories and we continue to hear about quite a number of them as time goes by. And we're having one of uh, uh, a correspondent here talking about uh, reporting that about 200 attackers, of course, the uh, police spokesperson we spoke to earlier was talking about at least 50. What have you heard of in terms of the number of attackers? Because now we're hearing that it could have been uh, about 200. Well, there's yet to be any official uh, statement from the security officers. Mm -hmm. uh, what I can see are very many, uh, uh, should I say, junior officers patrolling, uh, quite a number also looking at shops as the residents are. Uh, the seniors have yet come up to give a briefing. Perhaps they're trying to get the correct details that maybe when they speak to us, they do have something solid. And after we just have questions, uh, very tough questions for them. So right now we cannot really tell, uh, uh, just apart from what they go, I can tell us. And remember, Sophia, that when the gunshots began, a lot of these people made it to 
made for the bushes or their bedrooms or under their beds or whatever. So they cannot really establish what, what we do know is that at least two vans were used in the escape. And like I mentioned earlier, it's possible some escaped uh, using those vehicles and others may have disappeared on foot and quite possibly others may have mingled with the locals. Who knows? So the number only perhaps the proper estimates can be given the police, but as it is right now, they haven't told us officially. All right, uh, Fadi, we'll continue uh, to talk to you as we continue the special coverage this morning. Thank you uh, for those updates. Uh, you've just been talking to us about now what is emerging in as far as people trying to piece together information, trying to figure uh, out what this uh, attack was all about, what could have uh, um, caused it to happen, the conspiracy theories as you uh, talked about them there. And gentlemen, you're with me in studio, just hearing what is been able to talk about 